I received a letter a few days ago from Captain Anthony Ford telling me that his new boat had finally arrived. Anthony had a boat especially designed for catfishing and custom built for that purpose. Anthony normally guides mostly for blue catfish, but in Missouri from the middle of March until the end of April is spoonbill grabbing season. His boat had not arrived in time to get it rigged properly for doing that, so he decided to take a few friends out and check the boat out, make sure everything was okay on opening day and not start actually guiding people until the following day. Of course, I immediately accepted his invitation, and I arrived well before the 7 o'clock time when I was supposed to meet with him. I was amazed at the number of cars and trailers and boats that were already there. Anthony arrived with his new boat right on schedule. Among the many customized features of this boat is the hydraulically operated gate that falls down in the front to allow easy access in and out of the boat. We motored down a couple of miles to a rendezvous point where we picked up the guys that were actually going to do the fishing.
didn't come for that purpose. I just couldn't resist taking pictures of wildlife and some of the architecture along the way. After a few miles, we begin marking fish. But Anthony thought they were too small, so we headed on down the lake looking for larger fish. It's amazing how many people we saw along the way trying to grab those spoonbills. Finally, the electronics showed what we were looking for. The images looked like they could be spoonbill catfish. The guys dropped their lines in the water and went to work. And indeed, work it is when you're trying to grab a spoonbill catfish. Jack was the first one to score. That is, if you can call this fish score. There we go. I broke your boat in. I go spoonbill and I get catfish. I go catfish and I get spoonbill. A large sinker and two grab hooks is what you use when you're trying to catch spoonbill. Jack Jr. was the first one to hook into a spoonbill. Yeah, you're right, Randy. That thing about took my damn hands off. You got a pump here. Keep it tight. Pull up, then reel down. You want your fish to take a with it? If you never caught one before, you might never catch another. To be a keeper, the fish has to measure a minimum of 34 inches from the eye to the fork in the tail. This one was too small. And after a few pictures, 
had to be returned to the water. Put him in there slow. Slow, real slow. Really We saw every kind of boat and every kind of fishing technique you could imagine as we wandered around among the other fishermen. The hydraulic gate on the front of the boat actually has two parts. The upper part can be moved up and latched in place to provide a horizontal surface from which Anthony can cast his throw net. The further we went down the lake, the more fishermen we saw. We're going through some fish here. Matt's running them divers here in a minute. Them fish are suspending. Got a brush pile, reel them up. After the guys reeled in to keep them hanging up in the brush pile, we moved on down the lake a few miles. When we got there, Randy finally hooked into another funny fish, a big crappie. Anything that's not a spoonbill has to be returned to the water. As we arrived at our new fishing location, I continued my fascination with the local architecture until Jack Jr. hooked his second fish. Notice how careful that Anthony is to be sure that he hooks the gaff in the lower jaw of the fish so as not to injure it. When the trebles are removed from the fish, the fish is actually safer than fish that are caught on artificial lures or caught by using bait. This fish was a keeper. Shortly after catching the last fish and putting it in the live well, Jack Jr. hooked his third fish for the day. Sorry, too small again. Right at it. <laughs> Are you spitting on your hook? Yep. Okay. Oh. Maybe hung up. Oh. 
don't think so. It was wrong. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's a bag, ain't it? I think it is. It's giving. I think it's both time. This time it was Randy's turn to try to catch a spoon bill. Probably a little catfish. <laughs> Ooh, the stop at the floor. Oh, you might be able to there. Is it a big one or a little one? Oh, let's see. I didn't mess around with little ones. I didn't think it was It was time to take a break and give the guys a rest. This is Anthony's good friend, Steve. He also had a group out fishing this morning. Steve and Anthony are both catfishing guides. They're also tournament fishing partners. Steve's wife was busy trying to land a spoonbill as we went by. This is our fishing crew. Jack Jr. on the left, Jack in the middle, and Randy on the right. The boys were getting hungry, so we headed out to one of the local restaurants.
The restaurant we went to was called the Ore House Restaurant for obvious reasons. After a great meal, we headed back out for more fishing. Anthony had determined earlier that the fish were beginning to suspend, so he changed the technique to the use of dipsy divers. The use of a dipsy diver is more of a trolling technique. The guys do not have to jerk the rods in order to catch a fish. A couple of the guys had previous engagements and couldn't stay for the afternoon fishing. And since fishing had slowed down, we decided to call it a day and head for the dock. This is Anthony's restaurant, which he leases out, but he keeps some of the quarters in the lower part of the building and uses those for his guide service. These were the fish that were large enough to keep. The guys also caught three others, which were too small, and we returned to the water. It takes Anthony less than three minutes to clean a 50-pound spoonbill.
splash. Well, there you have it. Opening day of snagging season for spoonbill catfish in Missouri. A new experience for me. A fun time. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it.